good morning, everybody. And welcome. Welcome to Seattle Revival Center, land of the free and home of the brave, right? Where miracles, signs, and wonders live. So uh, isn't, hasn't this just been awesome? This has just been such a wonderful, wonderful week, just full of all kinds of God's goodness. So I'm going to start out this morning reading uh, from the Passion Translation, which somebody said the other night uh, is what they read in heaven. <laughs> and uh, I'm in Psalm 103 that says, With my whole heart and with my whole life and with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness that you've done for me? You've kissed my heart with your forgiveness. And in spite, in spite of all that I have done, you've healed me inside and out from every disease. You've rescued me from hell and you've saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy and made me a king. And you satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. You're a God who makes things right, giving justice to the defenseless. You revealed to Moses your plans, and you showed Israel, your sons, what you could do. You're so kind and you're tenderhearted to those who don't deserve it, and so very patient with people that fail you. Your love is like a flooding river overflowing its banks with kindness. Amen? Amen. Amen. Shall we just stand up this morning? Father, we are so thankful for you. We are so thankful for what you've done. Your loving kindness is better than life, and your mercy endures forever. So, Father, we this today, we say we're here for you. We forget not your benefits, that you forgive all our iniquity, you heal all our diseases, and, Father, you crown us with loving kindness. So we just receive that crown of loving kindness this morning as we step into the presence of God, as we step into the ark of God this morning. And we just, we come to give this morning, Lord, not to ask you for anything, but we come to give you our admiration. We come to give you our love. We come to give you our passion this morning. We come to give you the praise that you are so, so worthy of. We've come to behold the beauty of Jesus this morning. We've come to behold the wonder of our God. We've come to say, God, we're here for you. We present ourselves a living sacrifice this morning, holy and acceptable to you, Father, for what, not because of what we've done, Lord, but because of what you have done. So, Father, have your way in this room this morning. Have your way. Let the angels help us come and have glorious, glorious praise this morning and let our praise lord leave this building and enter the highways and the byways lord do it again like you've done in the past and let our praise penetrate for miles and miles from here let the praises of our god be heard lord in the post office in the in the starbucks lord in the the safeway store down the street god because lord you deserve you deserve all the praise you deserve all the glory. We give out a shout to Jesus this morning. We say you are God and you are good. You are God and you are good. And everybody said? Yes, you are good. Mm, yes, you are good. Word. 
worship your holy name. Oh, yes, I do. Well, you're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind for all.
we bless your name, God. Oh, we bless your name. And all that is within us, Lord, all we have to give you, Lord, to bless your name. Bless your name. Oh, let the blessings rise and watch the glory fall let the blessings rise and just watch his glory fall let the blessings rise and watch his glory fall let the blessings rise and watch his glory to be grateful for Captured our attention, captured our will, when oh, you captured our affection. How we love you, Jesus. How we love you, Lord. How we love you. Captured our attention. You captured our affection. Oh, so well our gaze is with you. Our gaze is with you. Oh, 
to see you. Wanna be with you. Tasted and been seen of your goodness, oh. and Lord, thank you for this week. How you've showed up so strong. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your presence. Sin will never be the same again. No. After one touch of your glory. We can never be the same again. No, 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 no. After seeing your glory, it just makes us hungrier. It just makes us long for more. How we love your presence. Lord, we want more. Just one touch sends us to our knees. 
What about your fullness? What about your fullness? If just one glimpse leaves us undone, what about your fullness? What about your fullness? So show us your power. Show us your glory. Show us the fullness of who you are. Oh God, show us your beauty. Show us your majesty. Show us the fullness of who you are. Oh, Spirit of God, we're overwhelmed by your presence. But we know there's more, come on, because we've seen your goodness. But if you were to send your all-consuming fire, could we stand in your power? And if you were to bring all of who you are, could we stand in that glory? And even so, we're hungry for more. <laughs> and even so, we're hungry for more. And even so, we're hungry for more, Lord. And even so, we're hungry for more. Just one touch sends us to our knees. What about your fullness? What about your fullness? If just one glance leaves us undone, what about your fullness? <laughs> what about your fullness, Lord? If just one touch sends us to our knees, what about your fullness? What about your fullness, Jesus? If just one glimpse leaves us undone, what about your fullness?
So show us your beauty Show us your majesty Show us the fullness of who you are. You've captured our attention you captured our affection and now every eye is on you to see what you're gonna do every eye on Jesus every eye on Jesus Unfolding beauty that beholding, let the beholding begin.
face shining back at me and I'm looking into your spirit what do I see I see my face shining back at me I'm looking into your heart what do I see I see my face shining back at me You are my son You are my daughter You are my son You are my daughter Image of God The image of God The image of God 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 I'm looking in your heart what do I see I see my face shining back at me oh image of God image of God image of God image of God I'm looking into your spirit 
What do I see? I see my face shining back at me. It's the image of God, the image of God, the image of God, image of God, image of God, image of God, image of God. You receive my breath. Rose up from the dust. the breath of life into you you became a living soul and you walked in the garden with me hand in hand through the paradise you were created you were created you were created for my pleasure the image of God, the image of God, the image of God. breath to the last
God, I got to have you for my very own. I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous God. No one before me. I'm a jealous God. No one before me. I'm a jealous God. No one before me.
And of all the things I've created The sun, the moon and the stars I've made with my hands the universe display You are on my mind You are on my mind You are on my mind And I made you a little lower than the angels And I crowned you with my glory and my honor so I think about you day and night I think about you day and night Can't keep my eyes off of you Image of God You're the image of God So it's time, it's time, it's time To realize who you really are image of God. It's time, it's time, it's time to realize who you really are. Image of God. Following your destiny Image of God There I am beckoning you at the finish line Oh, the mark of the prize And I'm calling you higher Calling you deeper Calling you higher Calling you deeper Image of God So press in, press in to the higher calling. Yeah. Come on, press in, press in to the higher calling. And I brought you here this week to impart to you a higher calling. Brought you here this week to give you a higher calling. You're going up to a new dimension, yeah. Going up to a new dimension. It's a destiny moment in space and in time. But I knew it. All of the time See it's part of the footprints In the sand You're not here by just Happenstance This is your divine appointment To receive a Higher calling This is your divine appointment To receive a Higher calling Press in to the mark of the prize press in to the mark of the prize press in to the mark of the prize the higher calling and if there's a stumbling block in your way Kick it over. And if it seems like a mountain in your way, say, move it here, move it there, move it here. Grace, 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 grace. Just remember it's all about perspective. 
to receive a heavenly perspective if I measure the mountains like sand then just sweep them away get out of my way I'm a son of God mountain you look like sand to me cause I got a new vision I got a new life I got a revelation of who I am present one everything he promised he'll do everything he promised to you so thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank declaration here. You guys okay? things 
from a new perspective. Ha, ha, I'm living in the glory of my God. I'm moving in a new anointing. I'm walking in, come on, the favor of my God. Yeah. Whoa, favor. Whoa, favor of my God. Yeah. supply and my heart is satisfied cause my eyes are fixed on you my Lord my Lord my Lord every day I press in every battle Cause my victory, it belongs <laughs> to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going up to a new dimension. I'm living in the glory of my God. I'm moving in a new direction. I'm walking in favor of my God. I'm seeing things from a new perspective. I'm living in the glory of the Lord. I'm moving in a new anointing. I'm walking in the favor of my God. Nothing can separate, nothing can separate me from your love. Nothing can separate, nothing can separate, oh, nothing can separate me from your love. Yeah. Nothing can separate, nothing can separate, nothing can separate me from your love. Sing it. Nothing can separate, nothing can separate, nothing can separate me from your love. Mm, we're going to sing this corporately. To a new dimension We're living in The glory of the Lord We're moving in A new direction We're walking in The favor of my God We're seeing things From a new perspective We're living in the glory of the Lord, we're moving in a new anointing. We're walking in the favor of our God. Come on. <laughs> Highly favored ones. Watch out, you just might start believing that And then you will truly become truly, 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 truly dangerous Whoa, yeah Thank you. 
separate us. Nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from your love. Snaps, gotta be finger snaps. <laughs> oh, that fell apart fast. Come on. Doesn't matter if it's backward or forwards. I'm walking in the favor, walking in the favor, rolling in the favor of my God. Da -da -bum -dum -dum. Some of you may be asking, what is he doing? 
Why is he doing this? He says, I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm highly favored. I'm highly favored. You're highly favored. Walking in the favor of my God. Where? in the favor of our God. Yes, I'm highly favored. I'm, I'm highly favored. I'm walking in the favor of my God. Come on, get a partner and swing him around. Yeah. Yeah, Elijah Revolution, they got it. Come on. It's the dance of The dance of favor. say you were created for favor for blessing let, let, let's just talk to ourselves for a second just 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 talk to yourself just I'm gonna talk to myself just say your name hey Darren you were created for favor for blessing to walk in joy hey Darren hey there's something better than the lottery it's called the kind of favor that can be found in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Hey, Darren, you were created to carry his presence, 
to walk in his glory, to know his face, to be a friend of God. Hey, Darren, you have no idea what God has in store for you. You have no idea. It's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be so much fun. And you're not going to be alone. You're going to be surrounded by some crazy people who love Jesus and who are ready to change nations, who are ready to change culture, who are ready to bring reform even to the church. Yo, Darren, talk to yourself. Just say, yo, yo, yo. You were created for such a time as this. No, this ain't no foolishness. This is preparation. It's a download of heavenly vision. It's an impartation of faith that I would believe the word of the Lord. Any believers here today? Any believers? Any believers? Just declare, I believe. I believe. I believe. God, if you say it, I'll believe it. I don't know about anyone else, but I will believe the word of the Lord. I don't need someone, some sort of other explanation or some sort of rational interpretation. God, if you say it, I will believe it. God, if you say it, I, I will believe it. I will run with it. I will carry this torch. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you know if, if, if we're actually gonna if we're actually gonna do this stuff that we're gonna have to start getting used to walking in the fear of the Lord? That if we're gonna if we're gonna be doing this stuff, if we're gonna be if we're gonna be world changers, if we're gonna be history makers, then we're not gonna have any choice. We're gonna have to start practicing the favor of God, walking in the favor of God. We're gonna have to start getting used to living in a place of abundance. Yeah, yeah. So Father, we just ask for an abundance mindset. An abundance mindset. Father, forgive us for believing the lie that we're poor. Forgive us for believing the lie that we don't have enough. Father, we ask for a grace, a, a, a new understanding of what it means to walk in abundance, what it means to walk in fullness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it means, uh, this whole thing, what does it mean? It's created in the image of God created in the image of God. Father, show us what that means. Created, that we were created in the image and likeness. That we were created in His likeness. Father, we thank you for, for even what's been established today during the praise and even in the worship. Father, we thank you for the prophetic declaration and proclamation that won out, uh, 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 sung by your oracle, Steve. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for these words that have gone out and began creating, um, uh, began creating um, uh, 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 new ways of thinking and, and even just creating a, 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 a framework for a new paradigm, Lord, and, and new opportunities and, and new options. And yeah. When, when I take a test, I like multiple choice tests. There's nothing worse than a test where there's a question and then you just have to write in the answer, you know? But, but how many know that sometimes the favor of God is seen in the options? And for some of you, it's like you've had the question, but you've had no options, nothing to pick from. And you've just been like, God, I don't even know where to start. Like, I got these questions, I got these dilemmas, I got this, this stuff that I'm looking at, and I don't even know, I don't even know what to write on the line. And I just believe that even this morning, even during worship, it's like the Lord started giving the options. Here are the options. Here are your choices. And it's the kind of favor that can be seen through multiple choice. And I think there might even be a, a, an option D. How many of you love the option D? Yeah. I, I love the option D. Do you want to know what the option D is? It's, 
all of the above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We take option D this morning. A, B, and C. All of the above. Give the Lord a shout this morning. Woo! Pastor Greg. Come on. Would you welcome Pastor Greg this morning? Yeah. Wow. He loves you. He favors you. He favors those whom he loves. Years ago, I was a young Christian and, and I had a prophetic word. A prophet spoke to me. He said, you know, he looked at me and says, I would, if, if I wasn't, if I didn't know who I am in Christ and wasn't secure in that, and I am, he said, looking at you, I'd be extremely jealous of the favor that I see on your life. And I, you know, that word came, right? And so uh, I didn't feel that way. You know, as a new Christian, I didn't feel that way when he spoke the word over me. But it began to sink in that I am highly favored of the Lord. And so are you. Yeah. You know, once you get a, a revelation of that, once you understand that it gets down in you, it changes your life. It changes your life. It breaks you free from, man, from insecurity, from poverty mindsets. He favors you. He loves you so much. Wow. Suppose you had an opportunity, you know, when uh, the Apostle John was walking here, suppose you had an opportunity to meet him. And let's say he's in his 90s, you know, and you're, and just come across John, the beloved. And uh, that'd be amazing. And you say, hey, John, you know, here you are, and you're, you're in your 90s, and you've walked with the Lord a long time. You, you leaned on his, on his breast. You were close to Jesus, and and, and you've learned a lot, you, you've seen a lot, and um, what in your, in your idea, what in your mind would be a really good prayer? Because you prayed a lot of prayers, and uh, you heard Jesus pray prayers. What in your heart would be a prayer that would be really good to pray for me or for God's people? And, and I just believe that John would say, I got it. And he would quote out of Third John. See, beloved, beloved. Do you know here you're his beloved? In order to be a beloved, you have to be loved. You have to just be loved. Beloved, I desire above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That's what he said. Do you believe God wants to prosper you? You know, it, it starts with soul prosperity, though, doesn't it? It really does. What, who you think, who you, what you believe about God is the most important thing in your life. And secondly, what you believe about you as a, as a child of God, as a son, as a daughter. How you, what you believe he feels about you. Beloved, I desire above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. When I first heard that, it was in, in our church years ago, again as a young Christian, I was told all that meant it was just a greeting of like, have a nice day. <laughs> Some in my, it just didn't settle in my spirit. And then the particular denomination I grew up in, they just, he just said, the pastor said, he's a good man, but he said, you know, it just means don't take it too far. Don't take it to the extreme. Don't take it into the area of finances. It just means have a nice day. It was a greeting that they would greet one another. And, uh, and you know, I, I just had trouble believing that. But it, it's, the thing about, it's the thing about religion wants to put you in a place and confine you and keep you from the abundant blessing of the Lord. And God wants to set us free from that. Consider just these couple verses and we're going to receive an offering. The generous soul will be made rich. And he who waters will also himself be watered. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Deuteronomy 28.11, the Lord will grant you abundant prosperity 
in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. One more, Deuteronomy 8, 18, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, to establish his covenant. I love the theme of the conference, Awaken to Harvest. We need to awaken to the reality that God wants to bless us and prosper us. And I know we believe that here in this house. It's probably like I'm preaching to the choir. But trust me, there are many out there who don't know that, don't believe that. You know, orphans are the easiest people to lead to Christ, but they're the hardest to disciple because they come to the Father's table, they see the spread, and, and they just it's hard to believe it's all for them. But more than that, it's hard to believe that it's going to be there tomorrow. Or the next day. Right. Or the next day. If you've ever taken an orphan into your house, what they'll do is they'll hoard. They'll just grab all the food and they'll stock it away, put it in their pockets, put it in their bedroom, under their pillow. Because they're not sure if the food, the dinner, it might be their last meal. But you know what? No. Not only is there dinner, but there's going to be a dinner after the dinner <laughs> as well. And, 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 ho oh, oh. <laughs> ho. Man, God is, he... He is so good, and it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Wow. And all, I mean, there's no poverty in heaven, is there? No. no. There's no lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Praise the Lord. Wow. Well, I just want to read one more verse, and we're going we're gonna to pray. I want to decree something over you today. And this is the Apostle Paul. He says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or under necessity or compulsion. Right? For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace you know, grace isn't just favor, it's God's divine enablement. It's His power. God is able to make all power, divine enablement, abound towards you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance. There's that word again. An abundance for every good work. Amen. Wow. That word give, that word sow, means to scatter, to, to literally scatter seed, to extend. But it comes from, check this out, another Greek word, speo, that means to draw out the sword. To draw out the sword. The root of that word means to draw out the sword. Why would you need to draw out a sword in giving? To beat back, to cut off the head of the spirit of poverty or lack or want. Jeremiah 48.10 says, Curse is he who keeps back his sword from blood. Is there blood on your sword? Yeah. There ought to be. You're using it. <laughs> Metaphorically, of course. Why? See, your sword has a purpose, and giving has a purpose. It has a purpose. So today, let's draw out the sword of sowing, all right? And be empowered to break off any lack, want, or poverty for watching online in your life. Because God wants to bless you. I mean, you may know that, but I'll tell you what, there's hundreds, thousands, perhaps millions that don't know that God is good. That He is Jehovah Jireh. He's the Lord of more than enough. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the cattle. And the hills. And if God, listen, if God can get it through you, He can get it to you. If he can get it through you, he can get it to you. So let's, let's prepare an offering, all right? We're going to just pull out this sword, okay, of sowing today. All right, and I want to declare this over you. And then here's the baskets and, and awesome. Okay, are you ready? All right, so just put out your hands and receive this word, okay? I declare and decree over you today. I declare blessings over your finances. That God will break the spirit of poverty off of you and your generational bloodline and that you will prosper financially. 
and that God will bless you with the power to gain wealth. That, he would, that you would have an abundance, as the word says, for every good work to advance his kingdom with your generosity in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you as you give. And you can give via text to give. Probably should have said that earlier, but there it is. All right. Come on up and just take that sword and sow. Yeah, we break off lack. And want through the spirit of giving and generosity today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Jeanette, would you welcome Jeanette as she comes on up? This is a good way to start the day, I must say. <laughs> wow. Um, I just want to bring one encouragement this morning and, um, and shine a little light on. We have, uh, how many of you enjoyed uh, Jeremy Nelson while he was here? Right? I mean, he's carrying fire and glory, there's no doubt about it, and all the other awesome things that God's doing in him. But um, you got to meet his wife. <laughs> Because even Jeremy will admit, she's got the fire and the glory. And uh, I want to I wanna put it out this way. Um, how many of you have been in a meeting of hers before? Are there any of you? Yeah, great. That's really good. You know, she, um, she, has, she lives her life with God in the world and in the church. She doesn't run to church to, or run to the meetings to be a Christian and then go out and do, you know, she's in the modeling air and modeling industry and um, in the fashion world. So I, I want to encourage you to think of someone in your life, a young woman or just a woman who's struggling with their relationship with the Lord, to come out and be in the meeting with her. Because whether she says something specific to that person or not, the anointing that's on her life has broken her through in so many areas to know how to be um, pure how to not compromise with the world because our young women are living in a, on a, in a very precarious place. Yeah. And so you might bring someone that has never even been to a meeting before and they may not walk out and say, wow, that's the best thing I've ever done. But there's something about being in the anointing because God has an agenda here. So I, f I feel quite strongly that there is an agenda with Miranda coming in to break things off of our, our, all the women in our lives that we love and that we wish that they could really see their father, their heavenly father, for who he really is in their life. So I just encourage you online if you're coming tonight or you know someone, plan to come and bring, and bring someone because um, this is a really divine appointment, like uh, Steve was saying and singing so wonderfully. So that's really um, all I wanted to announce this morning. So, uh, so we'll see you tonight and expect miracles. Hey, everyone. So good, Jeanette. Come on. Hashtag so good, Jeanette. Uh, awesome. Are you guys doing all right? You doing good? Yeah? I thought this was pretty hardcore until, until, we, until Charlie and I were hanging out with Mahesh last night and he was talking about the camp meetings that go for six weeks. All, all, all day. All, all day and all night for six weeks. Yeah, and I was like, wow, we ain't hardcore at all. I was like... Can you imagine how much Red Bull you'd need to do that? Like, I'd have to have like a mini fridge on the front row, you know? Not that I drink Red Bull or anything. Hey, uh, we have a, uh, AK, would you come here for a second? Um, a AK has been uh, serving me and our speaker uh, team this week. Come on up here, buddy. Um, this week and um, actually this was kind of a this was definitely God's setup because we went into the conference and this wasn't part of the plan and I was running all over the place said to Jeanette look I I need an armor bearer I need I need some help and all of a sudden uh, I ran into AK and, I'm, and uh, it was like the Lord was like that's the guy and so um, and so Jeanette Jeanette chatted with him and um, and, and and he's been it's, it's beyond a servant's heart. It's like he's got this prophetic, like, like he just walked up to me and gave me my phone yesterday. Like, I, you know, how did he know that I, that I, that I wanted to look at my phone? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe I just look at my phone a lot. But, um, you know, but, he, but he's just been serving with such a high level of excellence. And um, so, I, 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 yes, I wanted to honor him, but 
but today is also his birthday. So would you, would you join with me as we sing happy birthday uh, to AK? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to AK. Happy birthday to you. Speech, speech, speech. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're in for a real treat this morning. How many of you have never heard Charlie Champ speak before? Go ahead and wave at me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If you don't know our story, we, we hosted a, a conference at the beginning of 2016. We had uh, Bobby Connor here, Patricia King, Leif Hetland, and Charlie. And I had just met Charlie, actually, via social media. Uh, we we'd met on Periscope, so we'd kind of known of each other. Um, but actually, we met on, on social media, which is, which is interesting. And, um, and so it was kind of a last-minute thing, wasn't it? Um, uh, asked you to come in. I think you might have moved some stuff around in order to be there um, at the conference. And there was so much uh, momentum leading into that weekend. There was, there was so much br- breaking out just with San Diego and everything um, that I was saying to Charlie, I was like, dude, like, <laughs> get ready, bro. And he came and miracles started, started breaking out and just all kinds of crazy. So him is, he came expecting to come for three days, but ended up staying for five weeks. And his family ended up, his family ended up coming in. He re- redid his whole itinerary in order to, to stay and, and serve and um, and it really, really helped us uh, step into kind of our own revival identity because this was all really new uh, to us. And um, and so um, uh, what I what I saw in Charlie during that time was uh, was 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 a was a guy who um, who uh, who had such a uh, t- such a tenacious hungry to step into the uncomfortable it was a, it was a guy who um, who it, who if he saw somebody in a wheelchair he wouldn't wait to the end of the meeting turn off the mic and go have a private prayer with him it's like he would he would he would pick up the most difficult kind of things right off the bat and go right after it like I've like I've never seen such tenacious faith just to go after it as as well as one of the things I, that I love is is just um, uh, yet his his beautiful word of knowledge um, gift, and uh, so he get these words of knowledge. But not only would he get the word of knowledge, but it was like it was like it was like uh, it was like uh, you know it's like he would see it. it. Well, Mahesh was talking to us last night about the glory of the Lord and how it's comparable to hunting. And he was, I'm sure Charlie got it more than I did, but he's. It was fascinating, wasn't it? Like he was talking about how the glory of the Lord and, and how it's similar to you, the glory begins in your belly. It's like you get the, and then, all, and then it's like you got the scope up to your eye. You're looking through. It's all about timing. You're all, but, um, but I've literally seen, I've actually watched, I've, like I've watched Charlie and I've learned so much from Charlie just watching how he's discerning, how he's listening, how he's honing it, and then how he just, how he pulls the trigger. And, um, and I just, I just, I just so admire it. Uh, I just so admire uh Charlie, I, I've caught so much um, from the guy, and and he's he's a true friend of mine, and uh, and just being with somebody for five weeks in kind of an intense dynamic, going night after night after night, um, that could that could go bad. <laughs> like we've heard those stories, haven't we? Right, like. <laughs> And um, and uh, and just because of the the humility, the grace, and and I want to say just the integrity that 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 that, uh, that Charlie walks in, um, it it did not go bad at all. In fact, it was one of it was one of the best things that's ever happened uh, to myself and and to this to this community. And so it's such an honor to have Charlie here as part of our Awakening and Harvest Camp meeting. It just it just feels like it's just it's just so right. And um, and so I want you to welcome. Uh, uh, not 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 just a friend of this house, but actually one of our family members here at Seattle Revival Center, Charlie Champ, this morning. Come on. Wow. 
I said I feel bad about the introduction that I gave Darren yesterday after that. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Can we bring this down here? Would that be okay? Uh, I just want to get closer. I'm like a, like a, want to, I want to talk about something, but this morning, we can bring it out a little bit more. But, uh, wow, it's great to be here. I do feel like um, I'm back at home. And um, I've often told my wife, I said, uh, I said, we might have to buy a house out here. Just have two. Some, some of you like that. Hallelujah. But um, it's great to be here this morning with you and just kind of share some things. Um, Last night was awesome. How many enjoyed last night? Yeah, yeah. We had an after party in Darren's office with, uh, with Dr. Mahesh. And uh, what I, what I, there was a lot of things that he was saying. And it was very, very, it was powerful. One of the things I kept picking up that he kept saying was he kept talking about the sound of the people here. He, he was like, I, there's a sound that's coming from the people. And um, he said, uh, he, said uh, there's, there's, he just kept saying it over, he said it like three or four times, there, there's a sound. He said, there's something gonna break out here. You know, and, and, and it just started reminding me of we haven't seen anything yet. Right. And um, he said, he kept saying, the, remind me next time I come to tell this story. He would say it like, he said it like three or four times. So I was like, you know when a general tells you, remind me next time I come. You know that, you, you, that the meetings were good when he's like, yeah, so hallelujah. Well, this morning, I want to do a, a couple of things. Do we have a little bit of time here? Um, I want to pray for the nation of Kenya just really quickly. Um, the Lord had given me a word last month concerning their election, and um, I've really stepped into a, a, a major grace on that. Um, the Lord's just been showing me that, and you remember last time I was here, we, we, you know, the Lord had showed us two specific nations in the presidential elections and just how they, they came through, exactly how we said, and um, the Lord had shown me about Kenya, that the Lord was giving the nation of Kenya um, a year a five-year year of jubilee, a double portion of jubilee. And when he had shown me this, I uh, had no idea that the current president, um, his name starts with a K, um, that his party was called the par uh, Jubilee Party. And the Lord had given me a whole thing uh, about hands grasping and um, how there was going to be some shaking, but that uh, that that God was going to establish jubilee in the country. And uh, just a few days ago on the 8th, they had their election, and uh, the president was re-elected, but there's been some turmoil there. And I feel like the enemy has been wanting to uh, keep the strife like stirred up in the nation and uh, to try to break that cycle of jubilee that the Lord wants to bring. So just before we get into what I want to talk about, let's just pray. Can you take somebody by the hand? And let's just pray for the nation of Kenya right now. Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus Christ for the nation of Kenya this morning. Lord, we thank you for the destiny of the nation of Kenya. We thank you for the year of Jubilee, a double portion of Jubilee upon the nation of Kenya. And Lord, we just take authority over the Leviathan spirit, the witchcraft and the things that would try to bring turmoil in that nation. And Lord, we just decree and declare, come on, decree and declare peace, blessing. We decree and declare prosperity. We decree and declare over that country stability and what the enemy is trying to bring in. Father, we ask you that you would raise up a standard and you would release grace and peace. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to invade that nation with supernatural prosperity and abundance. Lord, we decree and declare every word that was spoken concerning that country will come to pass. And Lord, we thank you that you're going to make Kenya, Lord, a place where the lion of the tribe of Judah can rest. 
Let the lion of the tribe of Judah roar over that nation and silence all the enemies and those things that are trying to bring conflict. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for your glory. We thank you for your spirit. And Lord, we pray for the opposition that they would bow out. And Lord, that you would release this year of jubilee, supernatural abundance. Father, five years of supernatural grace and abundance, a double portion of jubilee. We thank you for raising up Kenya and putting a spotlight on that nation. And Lord, we thank you for even those that are in attendance this morning that have roots in the nation of Africa. Lord, that they would be able to draw out of that well that double portion of prosperity and blessing in the name of Jesus we pray amen, amen. hallelujah <laughs> Woo, I love it well this morning I, I, I want to uh, I want to talk um, something uh, very personal I want to bring you into uh, my prayer closet and something that I've been kind of contending for. And um, my, my hope today is that it would literally just stir you to begin to seek God like you've never sought Him before. How many are hungry for God? I, I'm telling you, we've been seeing some incredible things. Um, I just got back from India, and um, some of the miracles that we were seeing there, we saw a, a, a young girl uh, come up to the front with her mother who... Um, would take two steps and she would just fall and uh, she couldn't walk properly and uh, really to be honest with you there was nothing in the meeting the meeting was so dead that I was praying for a resurrection <laughs> and um, I just decided Lord you're always going to do miracles so I said if you're crippled in this meeting I want you to come to the front well people started to come to the front this little girl came to the front her mom was holding her and uh, we prayed for her and uh, she just started walking all over the meeting completely healed we had a girl that was deaf and mute for 12 solid years she had had a fever and she had lost the ability to speak and to hear and um, so not just like partial deafness or like you know no no completely deaf hadn't spoken in 12 years the whole family had came and uh, as we prayed for her, God opened up her ears and loosed her tongue and she started speaking and um, just miracles. Say miracles. miracles. We were in Australia the month before that, and a woman came and um, shared a testimony of actually something that, that kind of happened here uh, where the woman had had her breast removed and God had started to grow back the breast. I gave that testimony in a meeting, and a woman who came with her friend to the meeting was a nurse. And um, she had went through this whole process with her friend because she had had um, cancer and had to have both of her breasts removed. In the meeting, God grew the woman's breast back. And it was, yeah, you can clap to that. And it was documented because the woman was a nurse. And she actually knew the woman. So it was like, it was just a, such a mighty, uh, creative miracle. Just cr awesome stuff. I mean, one meeting, an angel walked into the, and, and handed me a ring. And I got up and, and I said, there, there's somebody you've lost a, a family heirloom and you don't know where it's at. And, and um, then I went to, flew to the next city and the woman came to the next city to show me the ring that she had found in her carpet that she had lost like 15 years before. So there, there is a realm of the supernatural that God is releasing. Amen? Amen. But I believe that God wants to use everybody. And the thing I love about the kingdom of God is that there is no distinction in supernatural power. Anybody can tap into it. Look at your neighbor and say, anybody can get this. See, God is just looking for somebody that's hungry, that's desperate, that just wants Him, that's like, here I am, God, choose me. I, 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 and putting themselves in a position, in a place where they're saying, Lord, I want you more than my next breath. Come on, somebody. I want you more than my, my breath that I have coming out of my body. I want you. And although I've seen things in the past, Lord, I want to see you in a new way today. How many are like that? And uh, turn with me to the book of, of Revelation. I just want to dive into something, something that I've been meditating on. And 
oh man, I, uh, is it all right if I take my time this morning? Yeah. I just, I'm telling you, I feel like God's just going to, if anything, impart to you a supernatural hunger, hunger in your spirit. Because I am hungry. I am hungry for a visitation and a habitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, turn with your book of Revelation in chapter number 3, verse 20. This scripture has been in my spirit for really about six months. Every time I go to prayer, I, I, I start to meditate upon this scripture. Verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice... Open the door, I will come into him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. There is something uh, that theologians kind of term as two classifications of appearances of God. The first is a theophany, which is the appearance of God in the Old Testament. The second that theologians talk about is a Christophany, which is, by definition, the appearance or manifestation of Christ. Traditionally, this term is to re, uh, in reference to visions of Christ after his ascension, such as the bright light that touched Paul on the road to, uh, uh, to Damascus. Um, there is, within church history, those that have not just reached out and touched the Holy Spirit, but had direct contact with Jesus Christ himself. And there has been, at least in, in recent years, growing up in church, this understanding that we should not necessarily seek for a face-to-face -face visitation of Jesus. That there are some... Um, denominations or groups or streams that would believe that you shouldn't seek after those things because you could possibly be deceived. That Satan could somehow come as an angel of light and deceive you as Jesus. But the Bible says that the only person that is made in the image of God are me and you. Come on, somebody. Amen. That means that there's no possibility that if you seek after Jesus Christ and an appearance of Jesus Christ that somehow Satan is going to be able to interweave himself in there and deceive you. It's quiet in this Methodist church. <laughs> there is a, um, a church, like, I don't want to say tradition, that leads us to believe that we should just wait until we get to heaven before we see Jesus face to face. But the Bible says in the, in the book of Matthew chapter 20, I believe verse 18, that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Let me ask you a question. What does that really mean? What does it really mean when Jesus is in the midst of us? In this revelation that there could be a place where we could open our spirit to such a degree that we could have a face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that when we see Him, we are going to be like Him. There is a supernatural, genetical uh, uh, manifestation within your spirit that when you see Him, you are going to be like Him. You are going to realize what God has made you to be. And that somehow the church and church tradition has separated the kingdom of heaven from the body of Christ. But we are interwoven into this supernatural new creation. And the Bible says that we have been seated with Him in heavenly places. Oh man, I feel this this morning. John said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man comes to me and he opens the door, I am going to come into him and I am going to fellowship. Wow. Say fellowship. fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
A church without fellowship becomes nothing but a warehouse and a storage facility. Fellowship will always lead you to partnership. Partnership will always lead you to a supernatural supply. Supply will always lead you to a supernatural distribution. Oh, man. Get a hold of this this morning. When you get into Christ, there will be a supernatural distribution and an undeniable manifestation that you carry on your life that will mark you, that people will recognize that not only does Christ live in you, but He's manifesting through your mortal flesh. Well, Brother Charlie, I need more scripture on that. Okay, well, turn with me to John chapter 14. I'm just, I'm doing the best I can, sister. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to get them right now. I'm trying to get them in where I'm at. John 14, John 14, verse 21. Now, these, these, for those that are theologians here, all these scriptures are written in red. That means that Jesus said it. So if Jesus said it, then I believe it and I can have it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will what? Shout it what? Manifest Manifest myself to him. This word manifest means to actually appear, or reveal, or transfigure, or shine, or illuminate light. Jesus wasn't just talking about, I'm going to come and just manifest myself, and you're going to have a nice, cute service on Sunday morning, because we don't ever meet any other day but Sunday morning. And you're going to hear the three points in a poem, three fast songs, two slow songs, offertory, altar call, Benediction, see you next week. The Western Church, can I preach to somebody this morning? The Western Church has so diluted the power of the gospel and what Jesus was actually talking about fellowship and suffering and supping with Him that we've come to this place where the only time we can meet with Jesus is in the four walls of a church and there can be no real uh, koinonia and the ecclesia is just in you know just a local body and assembly of people that get together on a Sunday morning and eat potluck dinner <laughs> Jesus never made the church to be an organized religion full of tradition and religion to hide behind the four walls of a church to to call fellowship, you know, watching the Super Bowl. No, the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ was a supernatural organization sent from heaven to manifest the heavenly kingdom down onto the earth, to release the blueprint out of heaven, to change the earth, to manifest and transfigure this earth to look exactly like heaven. And religion, can I talk about religion for a moment? Religion draws a line in the sand and says, if you go over this line, then you become a fanatic. Well, we believe that Jesus is in the midst of us, brother. But there is, you know, some lines that we have to draw. 
Brother, please do not come to the meeting and tell people that you have seen Jesus face to face. For He is in heaven. And we have to wait until we die to see Jesus. Jesus said that I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. He didn't say that I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the death. He said, if, if anybody wants to see the Father, I'm the door into that supernatural place. Jesus said, I am that life, and anyone that enters into me is going to find life. What does it mean to fellowship with life? What does it mean to manifest supernatural life? What does it mean to be like Him? I better be careful. What does it mean that when we see Him, we will be like Him? What does it mean where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, and we all, with open face, beholding as in a mirror, are changed into the very same image? What does it mean to so fellowship with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ that you begin to take on the very same image. Lord, you're going to have to help me this morning because this isn't even where I was going. I was, I was, I was just going to dip, I was just going to dip the people's toes in this, but you're throwing me into the deep pool, into the deep end and hoping that I swim today. This is a shock to many people to believe that you can manifest Jesus Christ in such a degree that when people see you, they see Jesus. That when Paul said, in him I live, I move, and I have my being in Christ, he was actually saying, when I show up, it isn't even Paul anymore, it's Jesus. When I, when I walk into the city, and I begin to uprile the whole entire city, and I begin to cast out devils, heal the sick, begin to cleanse the leopard, I begin to talk to the dead, and they begin to raise up, that it isn't even Paul talking about it anymore, it's Jesus in me manifesting through you. We got people that write whole books about how we're strange fire. No, 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 darling. We're just fresh fire, baby. We, we got the real thing. Well, brother, don't say that Jesus is in the midst of you. Paul said that Christ was so manifested in his physical body that he even started to bear the marks of Christ. Uh oh. That there was so much power coming out of Paul that he would write to churches and he would say, Yeah, I heard these guys came in, they started talking about how they're apostles. Well, I've seen Jesus face to face, and I'm going to show up, and what we're going to do is we're not going to preach sermons, we're going to demonstrate power. When did it ever become in the body of Christ? This place where how many degrees you have before and after your name distinguishes the authenticity of the gospel in your life because you went to a cemetery, I mean a seminary, and you learned something that some other deadhead taught you that never even went to the nations, never even dealt with any devils, never even done anything, never even planted a church. And told you, well, philosophically, when Jesus was saying that I will manifest myself to you, that was when he was talking about when you go to heaven. No, 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 no. There is a reoccurring theme that I have found that traces 
within all four Gospels and the book of Acts. And it's this appearance of Jesus Christ. There are these appearance and appearing of Jesus Christ. In fact, 14 times I found in the book of Acts and in the Gospels where Jesus manifested himself. He firstly manifested himself to Mary Magdalene in Mark chapter 16, verse 9 through 11. In Matthew 28, verse 8 through 10, he manifested himself to other women at the tomb. Peter in Jerusalem in Luke chapter 24, verse 32, he manifested himself to him. In Mark chapter 16, verses 12 and 13, as two travelers were traveling down the road, the Bible says that Jesus took on a different appearance. And it wasn't until they broke bread and began to fellowship that their eyes were open to see that Jesus was talking to them. Jesus manifested himself to the ten disciples behind closed doors. In Luke 24, verse 36 and through verse 42. All the disciples, including Thomas, saw Jesus in John 20, verses 26 to 31. The seven disciples, while fishing, saw Jesus on the shore. And Jesus shouted and said, do you have any food? Because I want a fellowship with you. Ooh, I feel that this morning. That's in John 21, verses 1 through 14. The 11 disciples on the mountain in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20 saw Jesus. A crowd of 500 individuals in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7, the Bible says that they all saw him ascending into heaven. And he, the Bible says that he said he will return in like manner. Now let me ask you a question. Obviously we know that Jesus is coming back. Amen? Amen. But could it be? Let's just talk exotic theology for a minute. Could it be that Jesus, that every time that we meet, that there's a possibility that he could walk in the midst of us? Woo! Ha! Take a drink real quick. You... You need it. You, you always need a drink after what I'm saying. Jesus' brother James in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 7, 7, the Bible says that he saw Jesus after he was transfigured. Whew. There were many who watched Jesus ascend to heaven. In fact, for 40 days, Jesus taught of the kingdom and they saw him. That's in Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 49. The least of all, the Bible says the least of all, Paul said that I saw Jesus on the road to Damascus like a bright shining light. The Bible says that he saw that light and it was so bright that it blinded his eyes for three solid days. The men that were with him saw no form but heard the voice, but the power of them hearing the voice literally knocked them to the ground. Look at your neighbor and say, hit me, Jesus. If you're watching online, just say, hit me one more time, Jesus. I... Acts chapter 7, verses 56 says that while Stephen was being persecuted and stoned, that he stood up, and the Bible says that he saw Jesus... Listen, he saw Jesus standing in the heavens, and the Bible says that not, not just that, that he was ascended, that Jesus was ascended, and he saw the ascended Christ, and he saw him in manifested form and in flesh, but also that Stephen's face was transfigured and was the face, the Bible says, of an angel. But when you study it out, what actually happened is his face became the same image as Christ. It was a manifestation of the new creation manifesting through Stephen's body that that even triggered Saul at the time and shook him to his core. Because the Bible says that as they stoned Stephen, he was the one that held the jackets. 
Kukarabashata. Acts chapter 19 talks about how aprons and handkerchiefs were taken from the, from the body of Paul and they cast out devils and healed the sick. I believe that as he removed, they removed the clothes of Stephen, that the glory and presence and power, that transfiguration moment, got off of Stephen and... And got on Paul and marked Paul to such a degree that there was no way that he was going to escape a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. <laughs> Lift your hands this morning. I decree and declare over your life that every person underneath the sound of my voice, there is no escape. There is no way that you can run. There's no way that you can hide. Jesus is going to come and he's going to find you and he's going to manifest himself to you. If you're watching me online, you can run. You can't hide. He's going to find you and he's going to make you love him because there's no possible way that you can run away from this love. There's no way that you can escape his love, darling. There's nothing that you can do to try to run away, to try to get away from what Jesus is going to manifest to you. I pray today that you get so whacked in the Holy Ghost that they got to carry you out of this place, that you get so hungry that you say, God, I want to see you in manifested form. Lord Jesus, walk through the wall. I've been like Thomas. I want to touch your side. I want to manifest you. I want to see your goodness. I want to see your glory. I want to see your power. I want to see your presence in my life. Now slap your neighbor high five and say you're going to see him. Yeah. I just got back from India. I just got back from India. And the, the Bible says that Thomas, they called him Doubting Thomas. They said he was Doubting Thomas because he had to see Jesus. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why you would call him Doubting Thomas. He just wanted to make, he just wanted to make sure. He didn't, want to, he, just, he didn't want to cash everything in. He just said, oh, Jesus, I better make sure this thing is real. Because I, because, can I say this to you? In the Western church, we can just play it safe. We can just say, well, you know, I can kind of believe, but, you know. Back then, it was like, no, it was like a death sentence. You're going, you're going to serve Jesus? You're going to go to the ends of the earth. Thomas was like, if he's really real, I better just make sure that he's real. Because I know that I'm not going to escape with my life. Because my life is hidden in Christ. And it's no longer I that's living, but Christ that's living on the inside of me. So I better just make this a foolproof plan. And just say, there's no... And, and so he touched his side. There's a place in India called Kerala. Kerala. It's the most beautiful place in India. And Kerala is where Thomas went. He went there and he saw these Brahmin priests. Brahmin priests are the highest class of Indians. Uh, one of my spiritual fathers came from a, a, a Brahmin family. When, he, when he, he asked Jesus to come into his life, he was, he, he was one of the richest, wealthiest men. His family came from a lineage of just, basically, they, they don't just believe that they're priests, but they're gods. When his dad found out that he was, he was a Christian, he threw him to the street. And he, he slept on the street and ate food, like from garbage dumps and stuff. And Thomas was there, and he saw these Brahmin priests that were worshiping the sun. They would throw water in the air, and the water would fall back down. For three days, he watched that. And so he walked down to the priest, and he said, Why does your God not receive your sacrifice? He, they said, what do you mean? He said, well, you throw the water up and it comes right back down. They said, well, it's always been like that. He said, I, if, I, if I pray to my God, this water won't fall down. It'll stay suspended in the air. So they said, you know, in American English, they were like, yeah, right, bro. <laughs> so Thomas said, Lord... I thank you for signs and wonders. I thank you that I've seen you face to face. He picked up the water, threw it into the air, and it stayed suspended for three solid days. 
all of the Brahmin priests in Kerala became born again Christians. The whole entire area was swept into the gospel. And to this day, it is the most Christian place in all of India. Now, Glenn, can you put that first picture up for me? Okay, this is T.L. Osborne and Daisy Osborne. In 1948, the summer, well, excuse me, the summer of 1949 in Portland, Oregon. This, uh, T.L. Osborne was from McMinnville, Oregon. He was a pastor. He had went to the mission field in India. He failed miserably because he just brought the scripture. He would read them the scripture and try to preach the gospel to them and they wouldn't listen to him. They said, well, our scripture says this. He became so depressed that he came back to the United States, pastoring a little church. He was thinking about quitting the ministry and becoming a car salesman. True. In 1949, in the summer of 1949, in Portland, Oregon, his wife, Daisy, went to a meeting with a man by the name of William Branham. And William Branham stood up in the meeting and began to, and began to preach. She went home to tell T.L., you need to come to this meeting. He said, I'm done. I don't want to go to the meeting. I don't care. I failed, I'm a failure, I'm just going to go sell cars. She said, no, I think you need to come to this meeting. <laughs> T.L. grudgingly went to the meeting, stood in the balcony, and as Branham was preaching, he brought a deaf mute onto the stage. He prayed for the deaf mute boy, and God opened up the boy's ears and loosed his tongue. And T.L. said, I heard within myself a thousand voices that spoke like from eternity past and said, you can do that. You can do that. You can do that. He went home. Go to the next picture, Glenn. He went home. You see all those? Those are crutches, guys. Those, <laughs> those are trophies. He went home, locked himself in his bedroom for three days. Didn't drink any water. I'm not suggesting this. You listen to me online. Just listen to me, okay? <laughs> he went into his room for three solid days. Said, I'm not coming out of my room until I have a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus. He locked himself in the room. Prayed for three solid days. He said that Jesus walked through the wall while he was praying. Stared right at him. Looked at T.L. And all he said to him was, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Before T.L. could say anything to him, Jesus turned and walked out of the room. He was so transformed and changed by that one encounter with Jesus that he set up meetings in Jamaica. He went to Jamaica, was supposed to be a three-day meeting, ended up being for six weeks. And 89 deaf mutes in his first campaign were healed by the power of God. Hallelujah. Say well, one, encounter with Jesus. one encounter with Jesus. Glenn, go to that next picture. This is one of my favorite guys. I wanted to do some pictures because oftentimes we speak of these guys, but we, we don't know who they are. This is Sadhu Sundar Singh. Sadhu Sundar Singh was a sadhu from India. He was uh, from the Brahmins uh, family class and he gave his life to Jesus. They called him the bleeding feet apostle because he would walk everywhere barefoot and preach the gospel. He was a contemporary right along the same time as Smith Wigglesworth in the 1920s. There is a book called The Visions of Sadhu Sundar Singh. I encourage you to try to find it. But in that book, he accounts that the last year of his life, the last known year of his life, 1929, that he was being caught into heaven, not just in his spirit, but bodily. 
going to heaven up to 10 times a month. It's documented that in 1929, he went into the Himalaya mountains up to go up into Tibet, and he vanished, and nobody ever saw him again. He came to the United States and in and, and England. He also went to Canada. And the power and presence of God was so on him that when he would go to people's homes to minister to them one-on-one, he would knock on the front door, and people actually thought that they were having a Christophany because he was manifesting Jesus so strong. Go to, the, go to the next one. This is George Jeffries. This is George Jeffries and the uh, founder of Elium Church. Go to the next picture, Glenn. This is his brother, Stephen Jeffries. They were both from the nation of Wales. They were young ministers having a very, very small congregation, began to seek Jesus night and day for months on end. They would just gather at the church and they would say, we're not going to preach because we want to see Jesus. They would continue to pray and pray and pray and pray until one day, while they were praying, on the wall of the church, Jesus Christ manifested himself And for three solid hours, people could walk into the church and see Jesus. Strangers that weren't even a part or a member of the congregation felt the presence of God to come off the street and walked in and saw what they described to be the crucified lamb. These guys had a specific, really, anointing and power for cripples and arthritic conditions. I've heard stories and been to places where, the, where both of the brothers ministered in England, and they said that it would sound like as if shotguns were going off in the meeting. As people's crooked limbs would pop back into place, and they would begin to walk. There was one man in particular that Stephen brought up to the congregation because they wouldn't just, you know, uh, pray for them behind closed doors in a little, you know, dark room and say, well, God's just going to do it, brother. No, they would bring it out in front of everybody. And one particular meeting, the guy's leg was about five to six inches shorter. He came in on a crutch and Stephen brought him up to the front and prayed for the man's leg in front of everybody. The entire leg grew out. And he started to run around the meeting. Yes. <sighs> Say an appearance of Christ. An appearance of Christ. One, appearance of Jesus. One appearance of Jesus. Is this stirring you up? Yes. Put that next picture up. How many of you guys know who this guy is? This guy is called the Heavenly Man. His name is Brother Yun. There is a book that you can get. It's called Lilies Among Thorns. You can also get his book called The Heavenly Man, but I encourage you to get The Lilies Among Thorns because it documents a story that he was a part of the persecution of the church in China. And for 81 days, he was locked in prison And was given no food and no water. Because they wanted to kill him. But, and they would come in every day and they would beat him. Curses God, walk back out. The next day, same thing. Starving him. And on the 15th day, as he was sitting in his cell loving the Lord and just praying for the persecution of the people that had, you know, praying for them that had persecuted him, Jesus walked through the wall and said, I came to fellowship with you. And started to give him heavenly bread. Broke the bread and gave him wine. 
And for, for 70 something days, Jesus would walk in every single day and sustain him by bread and wine. Look at your neighbor, say yum, yum. (laughs) On the 81st day, they came to beat him again. And as they almost were about to beat him, they saw a transfigured Jesus Christ. Put their weapons down and the entire prison was converted to Jesus Christ there's documentation also of Sadhu Sundar Singh that he would be caught into heaven and he would eat heavenly food I'm talking to you guys about people that are standing in the cloud of witnesses that are cheering this generation on and telling you, you're not crazy. You're normal. You're normal. These are people that didn't have, you know, the latest book in the who's who in the charismatic zoo. They they didn't know that, you know, you could eat heavenly food. They just experienced it and just wrote about it after the fact. They they didn't understand it. They didn't couldn't find it, but Jesus would just appear to them, manifest himself to them, and they would begin to to see such dramatic supernatural change on the earth. Go to the next one. You guys should know who this guy is. Go ahead and go to the next picture, man. Yeah. Brother Hagen. Brother Hagen saw Jesus seven times. In fact, every single revelation that was really the core value of Brother Hagen's ministry came from face to face encounters with Jesus. I heard a story that Brother Hagen was doing a camp meeting in a tent, and he said that it was the second week, it was raining tremendously that night, and so much so that there was puddles running through the, 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 the tent, and he didn't even know how many people were going to show up. He said there was around probably about 50 people, and... He just decided that he wasn't going to preach that night, but that he was going to just call the people around the congregation, uh, around the tent, to come to the front, and they were just going to pray, say a benediction, and go home. He came to the front, started praying, called the people to the front, started praying in the Holy Ghost, and he started hearing what seemed to be somebody shouting at him saying to him, come up here. Come up here. And he said, who's this crazy fool? (laughs) Interrupted my meeting. And he kept hearing it. Come up here. Come up here. He finally said, I wish somebody would, an usher or something, would grab this man. I don't know. Is there a hill around here? He looked up and saw Jesus standing at the top of the tent. And he said... Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but I was caught up and had a face-to-face encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus told him several revelations that he would go on to minister as really foundational pieces within his ministry. And everything that Brother Hagin did really in the ministry was going with and walking in the Spirit. Some guys have lost that. They just preach the notes. They preach the... And I'm not trying to offend. You listen to me a lot. I'm not trying to offend. But there was a difference between reading sermons and manifesting the kingdom. One of my fathers in the faith, he told me, he said, he said, Charlie, he said, they can copy your sermons. He said, 
They can steal your quotes. He said, but they can't huh, duplicate the supernatural power. He said, because when you have an experience with Christ, people can take your messages, they can try to regurgitate them, they can take your quotes and, 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 and leave your name off of them and say, I said that. You know how that is in social media. Anyways, moving right along. Um, <laughs> but they can't duplicate the supernatural power. At the end of the day, they can do everything, but there's no denying who Jesus is with and who He's not with. They, they can try to do everything to try to try to posture themselves, to try to hand out their cars, to try, try to do things that, that make themselves, uh, put themselves in the position to get in the right place. But at the end of the day, you can't deny power. It's undeniable. People know the difference. That sick woman that's dying of cancer, she knows the difference. When somebody's had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus, she knows the difference. You, you can feel it. There's a vibration. There's a frequency. There's a spirit behind it. It's that life-giving spirit. Jesus said that the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Jesus said if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it will be done for you. Go to the next one. Now, this is going to be a stretch. Oh, help me, Lord. I'm at home, right? I'm okay. This is St. Francis of Assisi. This is St. Francis of Assisi. In, um, <sighs> Shaba. In 1224, he had an appearance of Jesus Christ. In 1224, St. Francis of Assisi... Had in, go, go to the next one, Glenn. The, these are pictures of St. Francis. And you can see his hands. He um, had a face to face encounter with Jesus. And as a result of that, there's something within outside the charismatic church. I don't understand. It just bear with me here. Okay? You know, sometimes we get in, you know, into our kind of boxes. But let me shatter some today, okay? Just study it out for yourself. But in, in, 12, in 1224, he had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus, and he began to bear the marks of Christ on his physical body. And this wasn't just a guy that just had bared the marks of Jesus. He had supernatural signs and wonders following and accompanying his ministry. That wherever he went, there was demonstrations of power. But in 1224, he stood outside of the church building, in the, and he said, My eyes were opened, and I encountered the crucified Christ. I saw him transfigured before me, and I was never the same. Go to the next one. There we go. This is St. Ju uh, Saint, uh, let me let me get this because I was in there. I was in Julian of Norwich. Uh, this is a, uh, they call her Nor uh, Saint Julian of Norwich because there's a city where actually my family and we stayed in England. We would go every three months. She's from this town, and uh, her her cell or prayer room is actually in the town. She was on her deathbed. And she was going to die. She was going to die and she was young. And she had Jesus come to her, appear to her seven times. She was instantly healed. And she was the first woman to ever write a book. Hallelujah. And the book, you can still get it. The cover actually looks like this. The book is called Revelations of Divine Love. She spent hours and hours just meditating on the love of Jesus where she illuminated that love. And she wrote a book about the encounters that she had face to face with Jesus Christ. We went there and um, I was with my kids. And you, you guys have met my kids. They're kind of, all kids are like wild. And, and this particular day that we went there, they had, had a lot of chocolate. 
So they were actually like, woo! But the presence was so thick in this cell from where she, she stayed for years and years that when we walked in there, my daughter, who was five at the time, Eden, she looked at Bryn and she goes, I want to pray. And so we just started praying in this little cell, my son Nehemiah, we all just held hands and started praying. It's one of, we go to a lot of revival places, a lot of sites and stuff and see. It was one of the, one of the sites where my kids were actually like engaged into what was going on. The presence of God was so illuminated from the visitation that the woman had had in the room that when you walk in there, you can't even talk. You're like, whoa. The walls, guys. Man, I'm so, I'm so hungry. Go to the next one. How many guys know who this is? This is John Wesley. Picture of John Wesley. A lot of people don't know this story, but sailing back um, from America to England, he told the Lord that he was going to read the book of Ephesians 100 times. He said, I'm going to read the book of Ephesians 100 times. On the 100th time, he said, I looked up and Jesus was standing before me. He said, I saw Jesus face to face. This was the encounter that sparked the great awakening that when he went back to the United States, the power of God hit because he had decided that he was going to press in to the only way that he knew how. This guy wasn't necessarily baptized in the Holy Spirit that we know of. But he said, I'm going to read the book of Ephesians 100 times. I'm going to seek God until he comes to me. And on the 100th time, as he was finishing the last scripture, he looks up there and there's the illuminated Christ coming right at him. And branded him with an awakening that wherever he went, the Bible says that he was like fire. He, his words were like fire, they said, and the people were as grass. And when he spoke, they were lit up, baby. They were set on fire. And it was like in, in some documentations, they said that it was as if when he spoke, the people were mowed down by the power of God. Let's go to this last one. How many guys know who this guy is? Anybody know who this is? Just wave at me. Wow, okay. Anybody? Okay, this is uh, Dijius Dinakaran. They call him, he's from India. He's called Uncle Dinakaran. He is really, he passed away several years ago, but um, the, I would say he was the main, one of the main apostles of India. There isn't really anyone that is in the Church of India that has not been touched by this ministry. He would stand up. He would call for a gathering. Not a crusade, a gathering. 50,000 people would come to hear him. And unlike me, you know, because I'm a shouter, I'm a Pentecostal preacher. Anyways, he would just talk like this. And, and people would begin to weep uncontrollably while he would just speak. When he would pray for you, he would get down on his knees. It didn't matter who you were. He would get down on his knees and he would just begin to pray. I, I, um, several uh, men of God that I'm connected with would say, Dejus would just come and we would go to his office. One of my friend's fathers, who has a, a very large church in India, was going to quit. He had his resignation letter in his briefcase. He went to go see uh, Dejus and when he walked into the room, Dejus said, take that letter out of there. And he reached in and grabbed the letter. He said, God has not told you to quit. He said, you're going to go on and preach. And the power of God hit the man. He has churches all over. One of his largest churches is 50,000 members. Is... Come on. When DGS was seeking Jesus... 
to change his nation. He said, God, I want to move in signs and wonders and miracles. He started to fast and pray. He would get down on his knees every day and he would just begin to pray. For hours and hours, he would just sit there and pray. And he said that for several days, 30, 40 days, he would just go and just sit in the presence of God on his knees and just walk back and forth, just rock, saying, God, I want to move in signs, wonders, and miracles. I want to see my nation changed. I want to see my nation transformed. And he said, as he was praying, a cloud descended into his room. And he said, I was caught up in the heavens. And he said, as it were, I saw Jesus standing afar off, walking. And he said, it was as if I, was, I, I, I would run as fast as I could, but I could not catch Jesus. And Jesus was just walking. And he shouted out to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, he said, Jesus, Jesus, and he's running after Jesus. And he finally, Jesus turned and he grabbed a hold of Jesus. And he looked at Jesus face to face. And Jesus said to him, Jesus, what do you want? He said, I want to move in signs and wonders and miracles for my nation. He, Jesus laughed at him and said, ha, ha, ha. Let's go, ask, let's go ask our father. And he said, they shot up into another dimension, he said. Higher than heaven. And he said, there was a light that was so bright that he could not see the throne. And a voice came off the throne and said, son, what do you want? And Dejus, at the top of his lungs, he shouted. He said, God, I want to move in miracles. And signs and wonders. And he said it was like a vibration came off the throne. Knocked him to the ground. And God said, son, what do you want? And he, he got back up again. He, he, he said, I, I, I dusted myself off. He said, God, I want to move in miracles and signs and wonders. Voice came off the throne again. Son, what do you want? And he said it was like a, a, a wave of the power came. And he knocked him to the ground. And he said he started to panic. He said, God, God, you, I can't, you can't, God can't hear me. God can't hear me. He said, he, I stood back up. And in my desperate plea, in my desperate cry, I shouted at the throne of God. I said, God, all I want is you. And he said, when he said that, he said that God, with joy, like a wave of laughter, came off the throne of God. God began to like a belly laugh. And something he said, like a brand of a hot iron, came off of the throne and hit him in his chest. And burned him and he said, I fell as if I was falling from a high story building back into my body in the earth. He said, I could feel the vibrations, the pulsations of the glory of God in my room. And he said, I knew that I had seen the power that I had seen God's glory that I had seen him face to face and I knew from that moment on that when I spoke there would be demonstration he went to the very next meeting and miracles started manifesting cripples started walking the power of God started on such a de degree and such a way that kids that didn't even have brains just brain stems started growing brains people that didn't have parts of their bodies were missing he would pray and they would just grow out because he had an encounter with the living Christ and the power and demonstration of the creative miraculous had so embranded in him through that one encounter with Jesus that he was never the same let's lift our hands this afternoon
I believe we're standing in an hour where Christ is going to begin to appear and manifest himself to the church. I believe one of the signs that are going to begin to mark this generation is the appearance of Christ. There is an appearance of Jesus. He wants to appear to you so he can manifest through you. just hear the stories of the glories of the past oh god we're desperate today god more than miracles more than signs and wonders we want to see you face to face we want to see you jesus we want to see your glory we want to see you you said where two or three are gathered in your name there you are in the midst of them father you said through your son that if we if if we live in him and His words abide in us. We will ask whatever we will and it will be done for us. Today, Father, we're asking in Your Son's name for the appearance of Jesus. We, we want to see Him face to face. Lord, I pray that this afternoon that there would be such tenacity, such hunger. God, I'm asking You to brand us with such hunger that we become desperate. God, I'm asking for myself. God, I want to be hungry, so hungry, God. God, we were seeking you day after day after day. God, because we want to see our generation. We want to see this nation transformed. God, not just for the nations, but Lord, we want to have a face-to-face encounter for the nation of America. Lord, we're praying for this generation. God, not just more meetings, not just more gatherings, but face-to-face encounters with Jesus. Lord, we're praying for a marking, a branding, a branding. Seal us, God. We're desperate for you. I feel like what we should just make an altar where you're sitting and where you want to come to the front, you can come to the front. I, I, I just felt like this, this is what the Lord wanted to do this afternoon to bring this, just this stirring, this hunger, this place of God. It's not, yeah, we haven't seen anything yet. There's, there's whole nations, there's city takeovers. There's, there's God's looking for one or two people. Na- na- Paul Cain said a nameless, faceless generation. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is going to come upon your face. They're going to see Jesus in you. They're going to see the marks. They're going to bear the marks of Christ. You're going to be a part of that manifested body on the earth. The army of God. The army of Jesus. You're watching me online this afternoon. I'm telling you right in your home. Make an altar for God. Say, God, I want you to mark me. I want you to brand me. I'm not going to stop until I see you face to face. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I'm breaking off the lukewarmness. I'm breaking off the timidity. I'm breaking off the fear of what man thinks about me. What religion thinks about me. What denominationalism thinks about me. God, I'm going after your presence today. I'm going after a face to face encounter. Lord, we love your presence, but God, we want to see you face to face. Lord, I bless these. I bless them. I bless these that are here. Lord, Lord, if you're going to be on part anything, Lord, impart the hunger of God.
If there can be anything in this place that can be imparted, God, the tenacity, the hunger, the desperation for the things of the Spirit, to encounter you, to feast and to sup with you. If any man hears my voice and opens, opens the door, I will, I will walk in and I will sup with him. Lord, let there be a supernatural feast this afternoon. Lord, I'm asking you to break bread, release the wine, release the bread. We want the fullness. We want the fullness of your presence. Oh, God. Come in power. Come in demonstration. Come in glory. we've seen your goodness but if you were to send your all-consuming fire could we stand in the power and if you were to bring all of who you are could we stand in your glory and even so, we're hungry for more. Even so, we're hungry for more. If just one touch sends us to our knees, what about your fullness? What about your fullness, Jesus? If just one glimpse leaves us undone what about your fullness what about your fullness so show us your power show us your glory show us the fullness of who you are your beauty and show us your majesty and show us the fullness of who you are Spirit we've seen your goodness oh. but if you were to send your all consuming fire could we stand in that power and if you were to bring all of who you are could we stand in that glory even so, we're hungry for more. Even so, we're hungry for more. Lord. And even so, we're hungry for more. Even so, we're hungry for more. If just one touch sends us to our knees. What about your fullness? What about your fullness, Jesus? If just one glimpse leaves us undone, what about your fullness? Your fullness. If just 
one touch sends us to our knees. What about your fullness? Your fullness, Jesus. If just one glimpse leaves us undone, what about your fullness? Your fullness. So show us your power. Show us your beauty. Show us the fullness of who you are. Oh God. And show us your glory. And show us your majesty. Show us the fullness of who you are. What about your fullness? We're hungry for more. We're hungry for more. We're hungry for more. Just one touch sends us to our knees, Lord. We want to know what would happen if just one glimpse can leave us undone. We want to know what would happen if you release your fullness. <laughs> You release your form. And the fullness of the God that dwells within. the garden bodily dwells within and we are complete in him we are complete in him I am complete in you I am complete fullness in the fullness so my spirit rises so my spirit rises as my flesh falls down as my flesh falls down 